everybody. It's a show about shows. It's episode number 66. Howdy, partner, because what we do in this show this week, we go over our top 10 westerns. Yes, top 10. We dust off our boots, get on our horse, and gallop into the sunset. I'm Dutch McAllister, along with my longtime tag team colleague, Jordan the Pierce Owens. You tagged me in, brother. Hot tag. Uh, yes, excited. Very excited show over here. We got several movie reviews up here for you. Some TV talk, as always. Some Western talk, horror talk, and some news and notables. I can't wait, partner. Oh, I can't wait either, brother. I can't wait. But first off, let's just jump on into the film reviews. This was a semi, uh, like a melancholy goodbye for us because one of the main theaters in our town oh. shut down. Regal theaters have shut down but this is kind of poetic it's kind of ironous at the same time we watched the movie the last shift yes the last shift stanley an aging fast food worker prepares to work his final graveyard shift after 38 years when he's asked to train his replacement javon stanley's weekend takes the unexpected turn this has a great performance by richard jenkins shane mcnay uh, McGay, yeah, McGay, uh, Ed O'Neill, Davin Joy, uh, J- Davin, uh, Davine Joy Randolph, I'm sorry, and Allison Tolman. Jordan, this was one of those that, you know, we, we, we went to watch because we couldn't watch the David Copperfield movie, but it turned out to be a decent look at uh, what, what, what uh, life is like in real life, almost for a guy who's worked in the fast food industry for 38 years. Uh, what was your take on this? Yeah, it was you were the one that brought it up that we were literally seeing the last shift at the movie place at the last shift. Uh, this even as we walked out, we didn't see a single soul. Uh, no one was at the concessions. No one was around. It was really the last shift there for good old Regal. So we'll miss it. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll be back twenty twenty one. Maybe fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, the last shift anyway for this one here. Yeah, this is one of those. It's a slice of life. If you're looking for anything super exciting. You're not really going to find it here. There's a couple moments of, you know, uh, where it picks up a little bit here, but it's very much just a character study here. You know, uh, McGee's having a hard time at it, and Jenkins is kind of at a crossroads in his life. Uh, you find a little bit more about, you know, situations with his mother and his brother and whatnot here. So I, I enjoyed it, though. I don't mind these small like, slice of life movies when they're well acted, and it held my attention in the ending. I think we both kind of looked at each other like, it's not ending, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, and 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 I'll be honest. I, I'm going to piggyback you on that. It, it was a it was a good slice of life, we'll say. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it, Stanley isn't really that sharpest blade in the toolbox, or or even in the knife stand, or anywhere else in the world. But and where he is, he runs that graveyard shift like he owns it. He puts a lot of pride in it. And I say, if you're not putting any pride in anything you do, then it's going to be a bad job for you. But he seems to enjoy it. Uh, things do turn a little bad at the end for him, but other than that, it, it you know, I just to see the friendship between him and Ed O'Neill, uh, you know, uh, work out, you know, after all these years of being in high school, he's always stayed with him, uh, as a friend. I think they're both down on their luck losers, if you really want to put it that way. They've really not achieved a lot in life, both of them, I believe. One lives in the sister's garage, the other one just lives in a house with like meth addicts and whatever else but uh you know and then of course uh javon's character uh on parole you know just trying to get his life back together uh yeah and it's just you know because we all know people who've, who've who've had infractions and his infraction wasn't that bad uh so but you know but of course he, his punishment is basically you have to get a job you have to work here and you have to just and he has he's trying to feed a family and he's trying to get back on the right track so it's if you're looking for a film that's going to be action-packed it's really not going to happen it's a lot of regular oh my that seems like what happened the other day at work uh type feel but it was still a well-acted film and a lot of tv actors didn't really need a big name actor you know to pull this off Hey man, I like Jenkins. He's a big name actor to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, he is. He's a, he's a good character actor. Small smaller uh, films and, and and smaller television shows, you know. And I think Ed O'Neill. I, I I've always been a big fan of Ed O'Neill. Um, from you know from you know from a lot of days of Dutch, uh, you know, and some other movies. But you know, they just oh. never gave him a chance. Uh, really? You know, I think. Gosh. Yeah, that's where I pulled it from. Uh, but uh, yeah, so other than that, it's it's a great, uh, 
you know, good, good, good acting on some. And uh, I gave it, uh, I'm just going to mine is if I could pull it up. Dear God, my notes are all over the place tonight. But my, uh, my, uh, it was a three, a three snowflake deal on the snow. Um, I gave it three snowflakes. I'm going to, I'm going to actually bump it up just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and give it three and a half. I'm going to put it just a little bit more above you. Like I said, I had a good time from beginning to end here. A little like lesser in the end, but it's not totally, I don't want to overly uh, down the ending, but yeah, uh, I, I thought it, it, it I kind of knew what I was getting into to a large degree if you see the trailer here. So I enjoyed it. Not for everyone, but I, I actually enjoyed it. So. Yeah, so we both agree it is something to go look at, which is yeah. nice. Uh, up next, a bit of a revisit because you got to it. I didn't get it squeezing in last show, but I squeezed it in for this show as I always do, and that's my Sandler Netflix movies. Uh, Hubie Halloween, despite his devotion to his hometown of Salem and its Halloween celebration, Hubie Dubois, uh, Dubois is a figure of mockery for kids and adults alike. But this year, something is going bump in the night. And it's up to Hubie to save Halloween. This stars Adam Sandler, Kevin James, Julie Bowen. I like seeing that pair back, by the way. I knew Bowen would be back sooner or later uh, after uh, Modern Family uh, and Happy Gilmore. Ray Liotta, C. Buscemi, Keenan Thompson. He could keep going. Uh, a couple other surprises. Tim Meadows. Everyone's in this. Um, <laughs> uh, this seems to have a pretty good track record from my friends on social media. Everyone seems to be kind of enjoying this one. I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of groaned as much as I laughed. There's some laughs in here. Um, the overall message at the end is kind of sweet. I enjoyed uh, June Squibb um, as well. Always fun with her yep. t-shirts and she's she's having a fun a little arc here and then in the background as well. I'm a little annoyed by Sandler's voice. Again, didn't feel it needed to be that. I think if he had just played this a little more straight, I might have liked it that much more. Um, there's a big segue with Spushami, another character that seems kind of wasted. Uh, it just seems like they're just doing it just to try to trick you, but in the end, it just kind of leaves you going, whatever. Although they also have a couple of chuckles, so I can't say I hated that either. So this was fine. It's not the worst. It's not the best. Uh, I'm going to give it a solid two stars. Two stars for Hubie. Yeah, that's like a half a star less than what I gave it. Um, I gave it two and a half. But uh, I, I I thought it was a fun film. Uh, it's fine enough. It, it's, it's fine, you know. It, it 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 made controversy this week, though. Did you hear about that? Oh, Christ on a cracker! What what did Hubie do for crying out loud? Well, it's not what Hubie did. It's what one of the uh, co-stars did. Um, she was one of the, the I think the anchor at the desk who was uh, dressed up as uh, as uh, Harley Quinn. Uh, she did it, and she got fired uh, from her t- uh, ABC Seven uh, show. Uh, on TV, she got fired from the newsroom because I guess it violated her contract to, to star in a movie. <laughs> really? Oh, it's not a controversy. She just no, no, no. Right, well, it, it is controversy for the station because they got rid of a uh, supposed liked uh, anchor because yeah, of well, that's uh, their fault for having a shitty con- uh, track. Why can't? Why would you let someone be in an Adam Sandler movie? It's not smut. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead uh, because I we usually take turns uh, and I think I screwed up the order this week, but that's all right. But uh, well, the next movie we're going to talk about is Deathstroke Knights and Dragons. This is part of the DC Warner Brothers uh, Animation Studios. Uh, Ten years ago, Slade Wilson, a.k.a. the super assassin called Deathstroke, made a tragic mistake and his wife and son paid a terrible price. Now, a decade later... Wilson's family is threatened once again by the murderous jackal and the terrorist of Hive. This has the voice talents of Michael Chiklis, Sasha Alexander, and Chris Alex. Um, I don't know. I, I watched this uh, because it was just something I can get get a hold of, and I wanted to have a theme this week uh, for myself. And uh, I, you know, Michael Chiklis plays the voice of uh, Slade Wilson. Um, you know, which is, uh, you know, Deathstroke, of course. And uh, he's he's very good at it. It took me a little bit of time to figure out who it was because I didn't read the credits until then. Uh, and uh, it's a very good. Jericho makes an appearance. Uh, for those who do not know, it's not talking about Chris Jericho. We're talking about Jericho, the son. Um, and yeah, I see a little tease. Uh, but yeah, um, who, who's a mute uh, due to the fact that the jackal sliced his throat. Uh, and so it's a, you know, it's, it's a bloody... Uh, bloody filled, body filled, uh, comic, uh, action film. Uh, at first I didn't know how to go about it. I was thinking, well, Slade is, you know, you know, Deathstroke as a hero. What do I think about him as a hero? Because he's basically a mercenary. Um, I didn't really think much of it, but I did go in thinking, "Mm, give it a shot. Turned out it was a decent, uh, decent way of doing it. 
Uh, but yeah, it's it, it. There's a few things uh, that they can fix. But all in all, I gave it three and a half snowflakes. Again, Warner Brothers Animation Department uh, knows what they're doing with these characters. Um, but again, later and later, uh, I'll, I'll discuss another Warner Brothers animation film, which kind of gets a little shaky. But uh, let's go forward and uh, onward uh, to the next show. I will say this. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get to it yet, but I did pick up this uh, based on your recommendation. Yes, it's a very it's a very good one actually. So, You'll enjoy it. Uh, I'll probably be talking about that next week here, Superman, uh, Man of Tomorrow. So I found a good deal of it on uh, the eBay brand new for a pretty good price. So I went ahead and did the deal. Uh, speaking job. of, I hope you enjoy it, sir. I've got an irresistible deal for you because let's talk about the movie Irresistible. Uh, a Democratic political consultant helps a retired Marine colonel run for mayor in a small conservative Wisconsin town. This features Steve Carell, Rose Byrne, Chris Cooper, Mackenzie Davis, Brett Sexton, Natasha Leone, to- Topher Grace, and Will Sasso. This is directed by and written by John Stewart. Uh, first of all, Dutch, did you know Topher is short for Christopher? No, I did not. It sounds like somebody who just didn't know how to say Chris in the front. So that's how Topher. I don't. I don't dislike it. I mean, if you do, if you could do the first part of the word and and shorten it, why can't you do the last part? By the way, can I just say this is how close you and I were to be watching the same film? I chose Deathstroke over this movie. <laughs> I was like, I, I want to watch it, but I still don't want to pay for it. Like it was like two ninety nine. I'd rather pay three ninety nine, I guess, for uh, Deathstroke. So I paid a dollar more, but I enjoyed it. So. I, I pulled the plug. I actually, I, where I work, we still have a red box, so I actually had the physical disc, um, <laughs> and I had a coupon. So between this and tax collector, I spent like five dollars altogether. Uh-huh. Well, that's not, <laughs> not bad at all for a good review. Uh, but yeah, so it, irresistible. You know what this reminded me of? Did you ever see? Um, Promised Land a couple years back with Damon and Krasinski. Um, no, no, I'm just gonna say no. You don't have to, because right? it's not super memorable. Neither is this. It's well hearted. There's some good laughs. Uh, you know, sprinkles were out here. Uh, I actually really enjoy the ending. Funny enough, uh, just because they do kind of a, I don't want to spoil it, but they have a, they have a funny thing they do at the end here that I actually enjoyed here. But yeah, other than that, this was one of those where I definitely in no way I have much bad to say about it. But I don't have all that much great to say about it either here. You know, like Crow's character is likable but not super likable. There's a bit of a twist here, which is actually a twist that you find in. Prom- was land funny enough that you kind of you either go with it or you don't so that might throw some people off here so uh, it's, it's well intended it doesn't beat you over the head politically wise which i thought was the right move so this can be kind of for everyone this is not a movie that only certain people will get into but again i, I think that's why this movie's been kind of very quietly talked about even if it got into theaters i don't think this is one that would be much remembered definitely come award season but even just come in general here so i'm still i still like it it's a good afternoon watch or like you said three bucks worth it 450 i don't know 20 dollars for pre pvod no it was not so very much glad you waited i waited uh <laughs> the, the, the i'm dollar. still waiting i'm still waiting brother <laughs> and, and you can wait and like i said if, if it pops up on netflix or amazon soon maybe then give it a shot but until then, I'm going to give it three stars. I liked it. I just didn't love it or cared enough about it. almost anyone or anything going on enough to really get me, like I said, over that hump. It's one of those movies that just couldn't quite get me, you know, into that second gear. Yeah, I've, I've heard that about through other people as well who had actually seen it. They did say that it wasn't as uh, charged up in the comedy department as it should have been. Yeah. But uh, they just, you know, they just thought it was, yeah, whatever you know they, they same thing you know same review and about the same uh, rating too probably uh because they gave it like two and a half out of their four star you know thought process yeah, so. I'll be nice, like i said i mean you kind of you know you smile and like i said you like everyone you know Mackenzie davis you know who was a terminator last year she's she's decent in this as well um i like there's actually a really nice deleted scene with will sasso that i enjoyed because he's on the other political side and, and like he helps him move boxes and he's like why are you helping me he's like dude, I'm just helping you move boxes. Like, he's just being a good guy. Like, you know, this is, it's kind of that kind of sense of humor. Like, it's nice, light humor. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, as I promised, I, I watched another w, uh, WB animated DC uh, labeled uh, uh, movie, and it is Batman Death in the Family, that beloved, com- uh, that beloved comic in which Jason Todd is tragically 
just mauled. But tragedy strikes Batman's life again when Robin Jason Todd tracks down his birth mother only to run a foul. No, he doesn't do that. Not in this film. Uh, <laughs> but uh, tracks him down and uh, goes and runs, runs a foul. This has Bruce Greenwood, Vincent Martella, uh, John DiMaggio, who plays the Joker, Gary Cole, and not Nolan North. Um, I gotta tell you, this was not as riveting as I thought it was. What they did was they took some of the comic and some of the birth of the red hood and they just merged it all together. Um, but it, you know, it was, a, it was a decent outing. It's 30 minutes long. Uh, I, if you get the, if you get the DVD, cause I only got the streaming version and they didn't offer me the three different alternate endings or something like that. They can, you can get on top of the first one. It might spruce it up a bit. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it, it was a pretty decent outing, uh, you know, it, but I, I liked uh, Joe, Dima, uh, you know, uh, John DiMaggio's uh, take as the uh, Joker. Uh, I thought, you know, he didn't play him over the top. He more or less played him as cold and callous as he should, uh, you know, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, in this car, uh, in this animated film. Uh, also though, though it may have only been 30 minutes, they put four additional DC showcases of potential like franchises. They may boot into the universe. Uh, we had uh, Sergeant rock, uh, which actually uh, Sergeant rocks character is played by uh, uh, Carl urban. Uh, of the boys fame who we'll talk about a little later in the show. Uh, and he, he plays that character. Uh, but uh, you know, and that was a, a decent short where you basically you're introduced to uh, you know, Sergeant rock uh, during world war two uh, during the Nazi realm. And then uh, his, his whole party gets, you know, vanishes. And then he has to team up with uh, Dracula, the Wolfman and uh, Frankenstein to save the day. Uh, and that was a very interesting take. Uh, and the way they set it up is for future possible, uh, you know, riffs on that. Uh, also, uh, we had uh, Adam Strange, in which, you know, he's just a guy who, he's these are these are like minor comic book characters that no one's ever heard of. I I've never heard of Adam Strange, uh, but I guess he 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 fights for the interstellar uh, rights of man and women, and you know, it starts out he's fighting, you know, you know the people of Hawkeye, you know Hawkman and you know, Hawk woman and things like that. He's fighting those people because they've invaded a country, uh, this, this uh, planet and they're starting to kill people left and right. And then he gets like zapped to another place because they need him there. And that's how he gets around. He gets zapped to different locations whenever they need him. So it was an interesting way of developing this character. I wouldn't mind seeing a full fledged film. The other one was just, uh, there's two others. Uh, one is the phantom stranger it is as weird as it sounds is just a stranger who wanders around saying, Hey, don't go in there. I don't think you will be appreciative to go in there. And they go, who are you? Well, people call me the phantom stranger. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't understand. And that was very let down uh, for that. They dug real deep. I think the price of the comic they showed was like 15 cents, uh, for that one. Uh, and, uh, Finally, uh, one that was pretty good. I think it's uh, from the makers of Sandman, uh, you know, comics, you know, the, the comics of Sandman from Vertigo, I believe. Uh, it's called Death, and it's about death, basically, and it, it about how this one guy feels so put upon and how he meets death, and then he just gets walked through death. It's very, very, very poetic, very nice. I can't really ruin it for you because – you know, even though it's kind of, you know, tells you what it's going to be about, uh, it, the way they get there is kind of pretty cool at the same time. So all in all, though, if you were to bundle all these joys together, um, I give this a uh, three and a half. Um, you know, I think Death saved it. Sergeant Rock, I've always been a favorite fan of. I, I read his comics when I was a kid. And, uh, you know, Death in the Family. It, you know, I would like to see the other cut. So that means I might have to go and get the DVD version out there uh, and uh, see what it's like. Uh, because I, I really need to see, because there was no Two-Face. They, they advertised Two-Face in this. There's no Two-Face. So it kind of threw me for a loop. I was like, where's Two-Face? They talk about Two-Face. No two face. No two face. Question for you. I don't know if you even know. Um, yeah. Are any of these shorts available elsewhere? Because I thought I seen Adam Strange. I think that's on another DVD, is it not? Um, as far as I'm aware, these are brand new. So if they did, they did them on a different one. Is Adam Strange the one where he's like, I gotta get back to my family? 
Well, he wants to find his daughter. Yes, that's the crux of the of, of the deal. His his wife does pass in the first few minutes, uh, and then he's on the way looking for his daughter. But uh, he so he's basically trapped. Is he a drunk? Is he a drunk yes. 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 So yes. I've seen this. That that is elsewhere. Yeah. So I'm just saying though, this is more new. What they did was they put a whole bunch of showcases together. I know, but it sucks um, if I already own that. Though that was my problem. Well, yeah, they 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 may have redone the animation. I don't I don't know if it was. No, it's, it's too new. Like I just saw it last year. Uh, well, I know they did. Uh, they did put it on one of the DVDs as like a clip or like a like a like a like a preview or something. No, I saw the whole thing. It's a short. Well, no, what thing. I'm saying it's a short. But what I'm getting yeah. at, did they do the whole thing with the invasion as well? Yeah, I saw him battle the aliens, and he and he yeah. at the end, you know, the, yeah, like a lot of people yeah. die. It's very bloody. Yeah, it's like a thirty minute, you know, you know, cartoon. Yeah, but it's 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 fair. And like I said, they, I know they did do. Uh, they went over Sergeant Rock one time. I think it was. I can't remember which one it was. It might have been under the Judas. Uh, you know, Teen Titans versus the Judas. You know, Judas contract, uh, stuff like that. It might have been on some of those. Well, but uh, all in all, it was it was entertaining. It was just, you know, disappointing that I couldn't get the other three uh, endings because mm-hmm. there's four alternates. But I wish there was, you know, I couldn't get the other three. That that's what sucks about renting it on. on yeah, the- and so it also seems like my other last question is the alternate stuff. It's all just the ending. It's not like throughout the film. Um, I don't know because again, I didn't get to choose my. I, I, as far as I can gather, it might be like a choose your own adventure. Well, that's what uh, but I can't. About. Is it just the ending, or is it is it multiple? I think you could They're choose out. at that moment. Whenever the Joker is about to leave the room, you may get to choose: does he live? Does he die? You know those type of things. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I like I said, I might have to just buy this DVD to watch it again, uh, and it might go up and 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 you know for all the extras that might be there. But uh, like I said, three and a half is not too terrible just to get it for streaming. But uh, I was kind of let down that I couldn't get to the other sections. Yeah, like, I feel you. I, I'm I'm gonna wait until you either a tell me if I find out more because I'm interested. But when I saw it, it was short. That's what threw me off from wanting to get it right away because I love the uh, the the uh, Black Mirror Bandersnatch idea and like I like the idea of choose your own adventure. Uh, uh, Brick Will Kimmy Schmidt did it recently, so I don't mind that new new concept. No, not new yeah. concept, but. But but I, I'll say this though, DC uh, animated department on spot. I really enjoy it a lot. I wish it was more bloody though. No, that's the only problem. I wish the, the death of the family was a little bit more bloody, but it wasn't as much. That uh, that Adam Strange is pretty bloody. That's pretty already. Yeah, um, and so is uh, God, which one was it? Uh, death. I think it was pretty good. Speaking of bloody transition, uh, the tax collector. David Cuevas is a family man who works as a gangland tax collector for high-ranking L.A. gang members. He makes collections across the city with his partner, Creeper, making sure people pay up or they will see retaliation. An old threat returns to L.A. that puts everything David loves in harm's way. This stars Bobby Soto, Shia LaBeouf, Cynthia Carmino, and George Lopez. Um, so I took this out. This is a I think it's David Ayer who's made uh, Training Day and harsh times and sabotage and man um does he love this kind of film uh he keeps making this kind of film over and over again uh what kind of a buddy do oh end of watch is another good one um uh he, he does it usually pretty well i don't like harsh harsh times that much and i hated sabotage but that's kind of a different movie uh so he's got, he got a very weird track record with this guy i think he also did the suicide squad if i'm not correct if i'm correct um uh, there's definitely some moments here. It's an interesting story here. I like Soto. Shia LaBeouf's character is interesting because they make him seem like this ultra bad guy, but then you can kind of tell it was kind of re-edited a little bit. For instance, there's a deleted scene where they show him do some more graphic stuff because I think they want you to feel for him more later on in the film and, and kind of connect to him a little bit more. So it's kind of a weird balance of, is this dude like the, the devil? In fact, at one point he even says to a guy who's like, won't even look him in the eye. He goes, have you heard of me? And the guy goes, uh-huh. <laughs> what have you heard? I heard you're the devil. <laughs> but then they feel like they backtrack off that a little bit too in order to make you kind of sympathize and like his character more for later on plot involvement. And for anyone wondering, he is definitely a coach in this this is more soto's movie this is soto's journey um he's definitely the 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 second if not third billing here 
Um, uh, and even then, uh, going back to uh, kind of backtracking, like the movie starts off with the wife, and then she kind of gets lost in the shuffle, and then she gets a little more involved later on as well. So uh, he has a decent track record again. So it seems like a lot of my friends on social media. I, I enjoyed it here. Um, it even has kind of a, maybe a potential uh, continuation of a broader world here. Um, it's bloody. Um, so at least, it, again, it's a decent rental. I'm going right again in that three-star range for the tax collector. The funny thing is, is, is so Charlotte LaBeouf is like the second or third Bill Do, basically. Mm -hmm. But he went overboard and got his full body tats. I, I heard that after I watched this. I was like, oh, this yeah, is those tats are real, bro. They're, they're very real. <laughs> I think one of the reviews on Ron Tomato, I think that's literally like the, the, uh, the the sample is uh he's gonna regret that tattoo for this b film in several oh, years this is not like gonna get him an oscar nod where like one day he's like yeah remember this i got it for that oscar win back in 20 you know like yeah it's, it's the thing is though the thing is though is it's not one it's a full chestal tattoo man it's huge i mean it's it's not your your run-of-the-mill hey look i got a winged dove right here on my, my neck no no it's uh fuck everything in a million million, million years is on his chest it's Scary. Um, the next movie we're going to talk about, you looked at it, it's called The Mortuary, a Mortuary Collection in this phantas Jesus Christ, phantasmagorical town of Raven's Inn. A I in this movie so I can hear you say that word. <laughs> I know, but I, I got it though. I got it. And a misguided young woman takes refuge in a decrepit old mortuary. That's the one, that's the word that got me. Uh, the uh, centric undertaker chronicles the strange uh history in the town through a series of twisted tales each more terrifying than the last this has clancy brown caitlin custer mike nelson jacob eldery and jennifer Irwin. Uh, tell me what this is it sounds like it's almost like uh that one movie that came out last year tales of the something from the hood? <laughs> no, no, tales from the. I don't know. It was like the the one with the pumpkin patch and the and the kids missing in the pumpkin patch last year. Remember? No, I can't remember. I can't. Never mind. Oh, oh, hold on. Uh, scary stories to tell in the dark. <laughs> yes, that's. I think that's the story. Yeah, that's the movie. Yeah. Uh, no, I'll put this more. This is more in the uh, tales from the crypt creep show variety. Um, basically, it has the kind of the bookends and then the interstitials with Clancy. And uh, the other main girl, uh, they're in a mortuary, and uh, she convinces him to like start telling him stories, telling her stories uh, from some of the dead bodies, and then she even tells a story of her own towards the end. So it's it's different little mini stories throughout. Um, real quick, I just want to show you this from uh, the last movie. It's actually Richard Roper, uh, one of my favorite reviewers, said, "What possessed Shia LaBeouf to get a massive tattoo for this underachieving gangster film?" <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, you know, he likes he likes tattoos, probably. Uh, I love I love Roper, Ebert and Roper. Shout out to Ebert and Roper. Thumbs up. Uh, anyway, so more to our collection. Uh, also, a real quick background. This is the first movie I watched on my new Shutter subscription. Shutter, the all horror uh, app. I'm sure you're going to download it any day now, Dutch, for your love of horror films. Uh, this yeah. is uh, a couple of reviewers over on the Stardust app, where you can find me as well. Find me under the name Ben Affleck. That's true, Ben Affleck. Also, where you can find me for Xbox Live and many other things. Um, this is recommended here, and I liked it. This was, uh, first of all, it's a movie I never heard of, and it's those fantastic practical effects here, uh, from the from the first story to the closing shot. Uh, you can just tell that like they're they're working with a lot of imagination here. It definitely pulls from other things. You can definitely see some inspiration um, from other horror cliches here, but it's one of those movies where yes, uh, you might have seen it, but it's at least doing it well, uh, which I enjoyed here. Um, um, and I like each story to a degree, some more than others here. Uh, I enjoyed the kind of uh, final story where the girl kind of twisted it's on his head to Clancy Brown. You kind of see it coming, but they do it, I thought, in a clever enough way. Um, Jacob Elordi, by the way, is from one of your favorite movie series, uh, The Kissing Booth. Uh, you might enjoy his, his story. Uh, his was kind of the most boring to a degree. It's very much just for the ending kind of horror story where it's a pretty, like, you could even say it's the Kissing Booth 4 until the very end. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just, let's say 30 minutes, the last like 10 minutes is when it gets a little horrific. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed this enough. I, I do recommend it if you, if you have Shutter is the first thing I throw on. 
um, the Mortuary Collection. Uh, in the end, uh, I mean, for what it is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give it an even four stars. Wow, that yeah, that's that's pretty good recommendation for for a uh, horror film because it's you know it's it's not like one set. That's always a good thing. I li- I've always liked the Creep Show and and the Tales from the Crypt type feel because I like those e- evenly set films and within within the show, you know, because you have the outside show and then you have the inside show, you know, and I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah, Clancy Brown's pretty cool. I liked him in the Inner Circle. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well. Other than movies, what else are we going to be doing next? There's some TV talk coming at you. TV talk is one of our newer additions to the show. Uh, talk to me about this one, buddy. Uh, I've been looking forward to it. It's one I do plan on popping on, but I haven't gone to yet. It looks like you have. Let's talk Utopia over on Amazon Prime. Yes, and I am actually one more episode to completion. Um, you know, I, I started this, uh, I think, last week. Uh, my, my, my cousin made me watch the first episode. He said, you're going to watch it. I said, yeah, I am. I just got to get to other things first and finish those up. But I am uh, actually enjoying this. It's a bonkers type. It's a very bonkers world of utopia uh that we're, we're we're looking at john cusack can't ever be any more evil yet charming at the same time uh you know and you know you know you have rain wilson from the office he's a, who's a, who's the uh, uh epidemiologist uh who, who's no you know he's trying to find uh, you know if this is his virus or not a lot of other uh, gifted actors, young, you know, young and, um, you know, just young actresses and actors. And it's just, you know, it goes and there's a lot of blood uh, that spilled and it's a good move. It's a good, it's a good show. Um, and uh, I don't know where it's going to go in the last episode. Uh, when we go to a, se- a second season, I don't know if it's just a one or a two thing, but uh, I am enjoying this immensely. Uh, at first, you know, you don't know where to stand with the characters. Do you like the character? Do you hate the character? Uh, most of the characters are annoying at, at all times. There's a few all time annoying characters and uh, you get to figure out which ones they are. Um but uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Everything that's going on so far. Uh, you know, this is a great departure for Rain Wilson. Again, another show that he did uh, was on Fox, where he played a detective, uh, a drunken detective. I can't remember the name of that, but it was a bloody good show. And uh, yeah, I was a little upset about too. They didn't get a chance. Yeah, and and I think that would have been, I think, a good stellar second, good, good couple seasons actually, if they would have let it go. But uh, Fox got antsy. But other than that, he, he, you know, he shows a different side as an actor instead of that one character you may know him as uh, in the office. So uh, I, I enjoyed it. What was it? Backstrom. Backstrom. Yes, yes. I enjoyed. I enjoyed that show a lot uh, until they yanked it from the air but yeah so uh watch utopia is it, it, well worth it so it's, it's well worth the watch and i can't wait to hear what you say about it because i i do want to get your your this a, you like horror films this is kind of like a comedy horror at the same time awesome, it's, good, good for amazon too you know for a while there i was like if this thing wasn't free shipping i don't think i'd have this channel but between this and the boys i said they're gonna do some cool stuff oh and uh, even uh, upload too so they got some cool stuff coming out yeah absolutely um, over on Apple Plus, you're talking Tiny World. Well, give me a big review of this Tiny World. Uh, this has uh, the narrator is perfect. It's Paul Rudd, who you know is Ant Man, who is narrating the tiny world of animals. And uh, we're not talking about you know the giraffes or the the the, the great big uh, beast of uh, elephants, but we're talking about you know ants and lizards and uh you know fish and and as you see right there uh you know little baby birds little desert frogs you know things like that and it's just a magical thing i don't know how they get so close to these i don't know if they're staged i've never figured this out but it's so amazing the 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 the, the, the footage like that right there and as you know it, it shows you so many things uh that you know i didn't ever know about um they, they they go to the safari in one they go to the jungle in the other and i think right now i think i'm in the backyard i believe somewhere but uh it's a uh, but it's a great journey uh and it's uh well uh well well done well shot 
And uh, I think it's, it's just great entertainment. If you're looking for a nature show for the full family, uh, it's going to be like the David Attenborough. Uh, so Richard Attenborough's uh, thing over on uh, Netflix. He has a little documentary over there. I can't wait to watch that. I'll be watching that this week when I'm done on the show. But again, that's something that uh, kind of I'm always keen on, uh, you know, my planet, the big blue planet, things like that. I'm always interested in uh, nature uh, documentaries. Are you there, buddy? Oh yeah, I thought he was gonna keep going. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I stopped on my uh, on my. Uh, it, on it, my... it looks beautiful. Uh, I'll, I'll probably never get to it, but this it looks beautiful. Um, speaking yeah. of beautiful, uh, talk to me about. Well, Kim. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm... Which is supposedly on its third season. I never even heard of this thing over on Netflix. Talk to me about the Wonder Beast. You Wonder Beast. Again, Kepo, Kepo is trying to save these wonder beasts uh, from a do- evil Dr. Ellen, I believe her name is. Uh, and uh, I was watching it, and I keep watching it. it just, it's such a good – there she is right there. There's the evil evil doctor. And, uh, and I, you know, Kep- Kepo is doing her best trying to help her friends and family. Uh, this doctor has now found the cure to making these talking animals basically relegated to the old time they used to be. Uh, and this is for kids Y7 and up. Uh, such a good show. Uh, very well done. Uh, you know, again, and, and an all-inclusive uh, cast. If you're looking for something like that for your family, this is a very good all-inclusive, uh, you know, cast, uh, you know, that, that everyone's been trying to get and uh, they were way ahead of their curve. Um, you know, I, again, the voice, uh, voice work of uh, Sterling Brown is in it and a few others. And I, I just find it just a fascinating show. Like I said, I was watching it the other night. I wasn't paying attention. I think I only got like three episodes left in this season. And I, it, it's just that good of a show where you can just keep watching and watching and watching. Your niece would love this show. It's it's beautifully done. Animation style is out of this world. It's not computer gen. It looks like it's hand drawn. It's done by DreamWorks. It is uh, well worth the uh, the investment just to watch it. Uh, so yeah, Kippo and the Wonder Beast. Uh, I give it big thumbs up for for just everything about it. This is a great story, and I don't get bored. That's the good part. You know, you know, these some of these things you can say ah, they're prolonging this show. No, it's perfectly done. And if it has one more season left, uh, let's ride with it. You know, until you know, until you see, so you tell your story. Very interesting. I might have to throw that on in front of her here. Uh, I got some wrap-up shows. They're just talking about because they're at the end of either their entirety or the season here. So what do you got? What do you got? What do we got here? Uh, this is Let's see here. Quick here. Uh, we got Room 104 has come to an end, completely as an end here, uh, the, the last season here, concluding with the episode Generations over at HBO here. This is a show I do recommend. Um, it's always, it's one little hotel room, motel room even, and uh, just different things happening. But uh, even this season, they're still doing some fun, unique stuff towards the end. I think I mentioned before to you on the show, there's a sitcom-like episode with Kevin Nealon. There's an animated episode. There's an episode with Kobe Smolders where all of a sudden she's in a, in a forest. Um, there's a great musical episode with Vikings this season. Uh, <laughs> finale, it's a very fitting finale. Um, it's a little bit of one of the slower episodes. So there are some episodes that might kind of catch you um, differently than others here in the uh, enjoyment factor for sure. It definitely happened to me. There's a couple of episodes that lost me or didn't entertain me enough, but then there's some that I thought were just brilliant. Um, cast wise, Mark Duplass, Batista, as I said, Smolders is really good. Um, Asif Manvi. Uh, always a rotating cast here, so yeah. Phil, um, show I will, I will kind of miss here. Room 104 over on uh HBO, uh, a show that I will probably not continue. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was a CBS All Access show, but because of kind of COVID and everything, uh, you're starting to see networks grab from different sources. So, Tell Me a Story has been playing on the CW. They aired, I don't think they even aired season one, or they just jumped to two. It's a different uh cast and uh thing of season one and two kind of like american horror story if you will um it weaves different kind of uh supernatural stories from uh from years past into one kind of story here i just felt like it went more soap opera than 
uh, anything and it just it bored me for the most of it so it might get better maybe i'll give it two if not three episodes to see if it, if it grabs me but so far tell me a story uh the story is boring me yeah uh, I, i've never I, I i was looking at that i was like i've never heard of it i i've never thought about looking at it probably but you know you're not helping me man you gotta watch at least i've always i did my three episode test always a three episode i'm, I'm with you on, on two to three like i said I'll, i don't hate it i like the main girl but i just like i said i just kind of the entire thing just uh none of the stories that they were kind of giving me were really grasping me yet so um but like i said I, i'll see if i can give it at least two or three it's, it's on the it's, it's gonna be on the dvr so it'll be on there for me uh and then for something that me and you uh, you finished it too I, if i'm not mistaken the boys season two has wrapped up i was a little bummed even when the day came and i, I know it was the finale until I, <laughs> earlier that day knowing that we're gonna say goodbye to the boys but uh season three is coming some fun new cast additions stole a lot of stuff up in the air uh what do you think of season two uh you're looking forward to three Oh, I am definitely looking for season three. Uh, Jason, Jason Eccles, Eccles uh, star, uh, joins us up uh, and a few other uh, cast members we've been told. But I, 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 I thought season two was unbelievably good. Uh, it just got better than part. You know, season one was unbelievable. Season two was even more epic. I don't know how you could keep up a pace like they're going right now. You know, it's just like a lot of buildup. And I like the twist at the end uh, that we saw in the episodes. I'm not going to we're not going to go into that but there was a great cliffhanger of you know of a new possible super villain we don't know about but uh you know and 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 so we're just i can't wait uh how does how this is going to fall, fall out for everybody um I, I i always thought i thought the starlight character shine she uh, moriarty signed you know did very well uh you know with her expanded role this season uh you know she's always been one of the main characters but I think she they, they expanded her role out a lot more. Uh, I, I I thought uh, Urban did great again as Butcher. Oh, unbelievable! I mean, this man enjoyed the stuff with him and his father in the one episode. I had Cash heard her addition. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, was it Stormfront? Oh yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> you can't we can't really talk about her, but it was she's she's woof. Uh, very, very, very good at what she's done. But I, I, I gotta say this though. I, I hope, uh, come Emmy time, uh, we look at Carl Urban on this, uh, and they give him an odd because he deserves an odd for what he's done in this show. I'll, I'll even argue, man. As much as I love Urban and Butcher, um, what is it, Homelander? And it, that dude, that dude deserves. Yes, that dude deserves a nod. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, both of those two characters, you could put them in either supporting or, or lead, you know, however you want to do it. But both of them deserve a way to get a nod. And I, I you know, I, won't, I don't like them when they have to be in the same category together. But, you know, uh, you could do it. I just wouldn't want it, but uh, yeah, I want both. I, 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 you know, good call out on that on Homelander, but yeah, I, I, I thought his, his characters really developed a lot. I can't wait to see how, where he goes uh, as well after this season because a lot he came. You know, there was some unhinged moments uh, and some moments where you thought maybe he could be a good guy, maybe he could be a bad guy. I, I, we don't know what's going to happen, so it's it's that's what season three is going to hopefully uh, uh, bring us out. And, and, and dazzle us more with. Okay, the next thing we have coming up is, well, get on your cowboy hat. Get on that horse. Let's saddle up. We're going to do our top 10 westerns. Yes, top 10 westerns. I have a lot. You, I only have 10. I didn't, I didn't want to do any extras because, you know, they're all subjective at that point. Uh, you know, but I, I, the ones that I did get, uh, I am very thrilled about it. Um, uh, we talked about this earlier. I'm going to probably go further back. You're going to go further forward, but it's going to be a fun time had by all. Don't forget you're muted. And so, uh, but yeah, so other than that, um, <laughs> ah, so uh, what do you want to do? You want to go first? You mean to go first? It doesn't matter today because we didn't really have a, an order this time. All right, three. Rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Okay, ready? Okay, again. Ah, uh, you beat me. I got paper. So you go first, sir. All right. So you said you don't have honorable mentions? No, I have no honorable mentions. I could have added some. I just thought, let me just, let's just do 10. 
folks, I try to have a show the same every week. I obviously can't when I work with people like this. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Well, I do because I'm I'm consistent. My I could name I could name some off the top if that I didn't have my list. If that's what you'd rather have me do. Yes, I do actually want you to do that. Well, I do mine. You do that. Think of your honorable mentions. My Done. mentions are the kid that came out like in the last year with Ethan Hawke. Ballad of Buster Scruggs that came out like the last year on Netflix. Sisters Brothers, which came out like two years ago. Hateful Eight, which came out like three years ago. And Magnificent Seven, which came out like four years ago. <laughs> I didn't even notice that, by the way. I only noticed that just now. All my, my honorable mentions are from the last five years. But I am going to go old school for you. So my number 10, my number 10, get, get in your way back machine, all the way back. To 2005. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's here in the corner here in Danny Houston, but mostly my main man, Guy Pierce, the proposition. Uh, there's a couple films on here. You know, I in general, I wouldn't say I'm a Western fan, but then when I look at this list, I really like, I think, all 10 of these. Um, even some of the other mentions, they are pretty solid, but these, this 10, I think, is a decent 10. A proposition is so good. It was one that I probably got, if it's 2005, I probably didn't see it until 2009, 2010. At the <laughs> library, I picked it up because it was free and I liked Guy Pierce. So, and I yeah. gave it a shot, but I really liked it. It's another reason why Danny Houston is, a, is an actor that I look forward to seeing because he's fantastic in this as well. Uh, John Hurt in a smaller part. So my number 10 is the proposition. Uh, very good. Um, I'm glad even you kind of noticed it in, in, my, in my frame here. I don't know if it's, I think it's kind of underseen. So number 10, for me, the old, old, old film, 2005, The Proposition. Okay. Well, I, okay, here, here, here's the deal. Oh, the reason why I didn't, because it would be loaded with a, the, basically the same actor over and over again, because there was only oh, a few. God. But um, I went off on a few then. Here, here's, here's what we have. We have High Noon. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed uh, The Cowboys. Uh the Cowboys is a John Wayne film in which he brings some boys along the along the line, uh, uh, and then uh, True Grit, the the more remaked uh, version. I didn't like the old Rooster Coburn one with uh, with uh, John Wayne because just didn't care for that character, nor did I care for Catherine Hepburn in that film. Uh, you know, and, and and you know, Blazing Saddles would be another one uh, if you want to go to that run. There's High Noon right there, uh, but yeah, it's uh, you know. It, that, that's actually a pretty good film. If you want to watch an old black and whiter, uh, go pull that one out and uh, get that going. Uh, but my number 10, it's uh, Clint Eastwood, who, who appears a few times on this list, it looks like. Uh, but Clint Eastwood, for the good, the bad, the ugly, um, about a guy uh, basically uh, turning in somebody uh, and the Confederates and the bad guys. Uh, it, it's just a great soundtrack was great. It's like, woo -doo 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 -doo. You know that type of movie. Uh, you know that deal is his part. Part of his spaghetti westerns. You know, fistful of dollars, a few dollars more. Um, you know, type of films. Uh, but it's a fun film uh, for him, uh, and it's just a great eclectic cast. It stands up. There's the Confederate soldiers, uh, and again, it's like a twenty thousand dollar bounty uh, or something like that on him. It's just a, it's just an unbelievably uh, weird film shot in Italy. Actually, all this was shot in Italy. Uh, but, uh, yeah. The good, the bad, the ugly Clint Eastwood, number 10. <clears throat> you're, you're muted again. You're muted again. Shut up. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I was saying, not that I've seen it, but my number nine, um, I got a couple here that I don't know if you're going to go with me on this or not. I, you're probably not going to go with me on this one for damn sure, but Westerns don't necessarily mean just straightforward pew pew Westerns. My number no, they nine, don't. the animated film Rango with Johnny Depp. Rango. That's a western. Is. That is a western. I agree. I'm not. I'm. You know. Look. I have. A, I have a few of them that are not even like that. You know. You know. So that's good. I, you know. I thought you were going to go five old goes west or something on me, but uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I actually do like that movie. I, I, didn't, I didn't come to my mind, but I do like that movie. Uh, but no, yeah. my number nine is Rango. This was a film that actually I think I've warmed up to more as the years have passed upon the uh, on a second and third viewing. Exactly. Um, exactly. I'm the same way. I just saw it probably like two months ago, and I said, you know what? This is very underrated. 
Yeah, I think I need to rewatch it. It's been a while since I've seen it here, but I think every time I see it, I think I kind of, I grasp more to the story, to the uniqueness of it here. It is not your cookie cutter, uh, just plain old uh, animated film for a kid. Uh, not that a kid couldn't watch it here. It just, I, I think it is geared more towards kind of a different audience and there's a lot of story and Western like elements that are going into this thing here. Um, some unique stuff they do towards the end of it as well. So yeah, my number nine, stick with it, Rango. <laughs> Well, um, number nine, uh, again, uh, is The Searchers. This is uh, with John Wayne. Uh, it's one of the best Westerns ever uh, that, you know, I would say it could go up a little higher on the list, but there's other ones that I really enjoyed more. Um, this is about a guy who basically comes home from the Civil War. Uh, he finds out his niece has been kidnapped by some Comanches. And so he and a couple, you know, him and some buddies get together and they're going to go to Comanche territory and bring his niece home. Uh, and gonna, it's nothing going to stop them. And it's just a great, it's almost like a great detective film, you know, where they're just searching across the countrysides looking for this, uh, this niece. And uh, it's just, a, you know, along with beautiful scenery. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just one of John Wayne's better films as well. The Searchers, if you ask any John Wayne fan, The Searchers is probably going to be in their top five, maybe, you know, 10 as ours is. But, you know, again, John Wayne is going to be a few times on my list because I did, I watched a lot of John Wayne as a kid. Well, it's a good one. I've heard of that one. Not that I've seen it, but I have heard of that one. Uh, my number eight here is the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. This is another one that I've actually kind of like Ringo. I think I've come, I liked it when I first saw it, but like, I've come more accustomed to it here because it's just great slow burn storytelling here. It's long, but it's worth the wait. It's worth the adventure here. The performance by Brad Pitt. Mwah. Casey Affleck very good in it as well as good supporting cast as well from what I remember here but uh yeah this is just it's it's really good storytelling here this is not the most exciting one you're gonna have which is why it's kind of lower on my list I can see why some people um if you're just looking for a western pew, 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 you're not gonna necessarily find it here it's got a little bit of elements like that but uh this is more of a character study here and that is why it's my number did I say eight yeah I said eight and I'm sticking to it well my number eight is uh it was a rated x film Yes, it was rated X because of the violence in this film. It's called The Wild Bunch. Uh, actually, uh, Quinn Tarantino is number one favorite Western as well. Uh, has Ernest Borgnine, William Holden, and a few bunch more. It's basically, think of uh, Ocean's Eleven, but as a Western uh with with a lot of death um but yeah it's, it's it's a bunch of outlaws to get together and they're old and they want to get one more last big score and uh so it's that tale uh, that's old as time will they make it will they not uh i can't really say but uh you know they they later on commuted it down to an r rating uh because uh you know the x seems a little too harsh <laughs> i guess but yeah it's a good film ernest borgnine is just unbelievably good in it as well uh, but yeah, I, I, that's my number eight. Uh, that would be uh, The Wild Bunch at number eight. Coming in at my number seven, I'm veering off the path here a little bit. We're going to talk about some comedies here. My number seven, when I saw it, I was like, oh man, I know this is making my top 10. I don't know think about it. Shanghai Noon, Jackie Chan, <laughs> Owen Wilson. Such a lovable movie, man. My whole family enjoyed this. I remember wearing out that VHS. In fact, I don't think I even own it on DVD. I've had, it's been a while since I've seen it. Uh, so I need to rewatch it here. But it's just, it's it's funny. Um, <laughs> it's just one of those great two pairings, man. Like, this this is why people just love Chan. And, and even Wilson had that great kind of moment in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, I really love this movie. It's near and dear to my heart. Shanghai Noon. Tell me why it's your number seven. Ah, uh, well, my number seven, I have <laughs> blue eyes, two handsome men basically running around the countryside is uh, it's uh, Robert Redford, Paul Newman, Butch Cassidy, Sundance Kid. What? You say it's me and you, two handsome men running around. Well, that, that, that we, we don't run around on the wet in the west, we run around in the east. That's where we run around. So, you know, if they talk about two handsome men in the east, that's us, buddy. But yeah, uh, Robert Redford, uh, you know, and uh, and and, and uh, Paul Newman, they let me give me back on the Jack play Butch Cassidy and uh, the Sundance Kid, uh. And, and, and it's just an unbelievably good foot film uh, where they actually go down. They follow them all the way down South America where they uh, meet up with the Bolivian army at the very end. And, but it has some epic scenes where they jump off a cliff. You know, it, you, you, I don't know if you've ever seen those uh, that, that, that highlight where they both jump off a cliff just to, to escape something. 
but they've done it. And, uh, but yeah, it, it was just a good Western solid uh, buddy film really. And uh, you know, they get down to the Bolivian army and well, we all know what happens in the end because it's based on truth. Uh, so, uh, but the, uh, but the Bolivian army, uh, may or may not win. I don't know. You got to figure that part out yourself. But uh, 1969 is when this movie came out. I just looked it up. I was like, wow, I've, I've, I've put an older one on board today. So there you go. Butch Cassidy, Sundance kid. My number seven. Very nice there. My number six, um, again, a little bit different. Uh, you can almost say it's a horror Western, uh, their heads are cut off. Uh, but it's Matthew Fox, it's uh, uh, Kurt Russell, it's Bone Tomahawk uh, that came oh. out a few years back. This was a film that got pretty decent reviews here. Uh, very blah hoodie. Uh, whew, don't go into it with a faint of heart here. There are some stuff that happens to good people and bad people that is just horrific. But um, this is just a really engaging tale. Um, great eclectic cast here as well that pops up throughout it. Um, yeah, this thing will this thing will leave a memory and a mark on you. Bone Tomahawk coming in at number six, partner. And got a, and and Kurt Russell, I think, kept some of that uh, mustache wear that he had from The Hateful Eight. I think some didn't he? He had that big mustache. When I looked at the uh, uh, Hateful Eight photo because uh, I made this collage, by the way. Uh, I stood away because from Hateful Eight with Kurt Russell because it looked like the same dude. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that makes sense, you know. They they both look the same. Uh, it's a little bush bushier and heavier in Hateful Eight, I think. You know, my number my number six is a little further up the road. I didn't ever watch the original, but we both discussed this during our Russell Crow time. Three ten to Yuma. My number uh, my number six on the list. Uh, you know, again, you know, you had uh, Russell Crow and uh, help me out here. Yeah, you know, um, geez, I just. Christian Bale, who's that one boy that I always talk about? Logan Lerman. There he is. Another mention of Logan Lerman on our show. Luke Wilson. Yeah, so it's just such a, such a great show, uh, great Western, very suspenseful all the way to the end. And uh, I never saw the original. My dad said he saw the original. He didn't like it. He liked the second one better. Who, what? You know, but he did. And so, you know, who says you can't redo and make things better? They did. So there you go. 310 to Yuma. My number six. The general census I've seen online, uh, I, I think they almost all agree that this one is a little higher uh, than the original. Um, my, my number five here is, is something you actually talked about in your honorables. That's the newer True Grid. The one with, uh, was it the Coen Brothers? Is that who did it? Yeah, the, Co the Coen Brothers. and uh, Jeff, Jeff Bridges, uh, Matt Damon, and, and uh, what's the girl that is now on Pat Facebook? Three. Haley Hatfield, I think. Haley Stanfield, I think. Steelfield, yeah. Steel. Okay. Hatfield. Well, you know. Uh, I yeah. came. I got the first name. This is another one, actually. Funny enough, you're talking about uh, the, the new one being better than the older one because I think again, I think a lot of people agree this this really uh, turned into a better uh, film than the original as well. Here, it's just it's really good storytelling here and and dramatic moments and yeah, this, it's just it's a well made film. It's definitely like I knew it wouldn't be. Uh, uh, my top three, but you know, it's definitely well enough to be in the top five for me. Well, that's good. Uh, my number five is a straight up revenge film. Yes, westerns sometimes you just gotta just get even with them MFers, but they do. And guess who's the one who puts the gang together? None other than Clint Eastwood after they've raped and killed his woman. So he gets he gets his good buddies together to go after the old Gene Hackman. And uh, they saddle up the posse boys and go out there. Him, Morgan Freeman, and uh, I can't remember else. But I, I know those two really got together in this film. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just a good movie. Um, I, I haven't seen it in about two or three years. I do need to give it a good another look-see. But uh, my fondness for it. Uh, is is still good. So number five, Unforgiven. All right, James or Dutch, whatever your name is. Uh, <laughs> Tell me you, what you will. Are you ready for me to go old school on you? Oh, are you ready for my oldest film on this list? I am so ready for. I want to. I want to hear you go back to black and white, baby. This thing is so old. <laughs> it's from 1991. Oh, oh my God. 1991. I'm only one years old when this came out. I'm talking the classic comedy City Slickers. City Slickers. 
<laughs> be on this list. Absolutely. Uh, it's why Billy Crystal is an American treasure. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, Sending Sen- Sen- up falling down on my top 20 of the year so far reminds you of just this dude is so fucking good. He should be in everything. I just, I be my grandpa, Billy, please. Just, you know, something. Um, you fall in love with him. Another great, you know, got to go to ensemble cast. One of the last films um, of, you know, that guy. Who's the guy? Yeah, Bruno Kirby. You have uh, uh, Daniel Stern. Who's the older the, guy? Jack Palance. Jack Palance is fantastic in this as well. And I don't know if he's in the first one, but Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, he's, son. yeah he's in the first one too. Okay, Jake Gyllenhaal in this as well. Um, so yeah, I love me some City uh, Slickers coming in at number four, way back in 1991. What is it? You you can't eat drink coffee and bacon or something like you can't be eat bacon as a as a meal every day or something like that is <laughs> when he dies. Some of those lines. Uh, my number four, hey, you know what? I'm going a little comedic on you, buddy. I'm going to comedic. You ready? James Gardner. Yeah. Comedic. Harry Morgan, I believe, was in this one as well. Uh it's called Support Your Local Sheriff. There you go, buddy. Support your local sheriff. It's just a good comedy, brother. It is a good comedy. One of my all-time favorites uh, of of watching, uh, you know, James Garner on on film. Uh, basically, he becomes uh, the sheriff uh, just because they're paying him to be. You know, He's, he doesn't give a crap about law enforcement. He just wants the paycheck. That's usually what we do anything for, right? Just the pay. So he does take that, and I believe Bruce Dern is in it as well. So it, it's just a fun, comedic film. Uh, if you want to watch an old school, I, I, I'm going to pull it up real quick here. Hold on just a second, because I need to tell you what. Oh, you know what? This one came out. It's rated G, and it was came out in 1969 as well. So, But, yeah, I do own this if you ever want to borrow it. I believe I have it somewhere in my, 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 my laboratory of uh, movies. So if you want to borrow it, I'll let you borrow it. You probably won't. <laughs> I gotta watch uh, Joe Frizz Volcano. Uh, I have that only on digital. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, volunteers, volunteers. Yeah, you have that still. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so that was my number four. What is that third that we got going on? And my number three here, you'll see it right here. Jamie Fox goes on a nice little uh, uh, trajectory to try to get his wife back. Leonardo DiCaprio, mm, 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 showing some scenery. Um, Christoph Waltz, who wants to keep being that character that he was from Glorious Bastards, but he's got a little more fun here. He's fun in this one as well. Uh, Samuel Jackson, that's not from that movie, but he's in this as well. Uh, yeah, this is just, it's bloody, it's great, it's it's long, but another ride that you're just here with it the entire time here. Always a great eclectic cast here. Funny cameo by Jonah Hill, if you remember. Um, <laughs> talking about the hoods. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I, I, this is why Tarantino is unarguably, no matter what Dutch says, one of the greats, Django Unchained, number three. And if you want to see a, a him, Django, in a funny movie, uh, A Million Ways to Die in the West, Django pops up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, I was hoping that was your number one for some reason. Uh-huh. Don't know why. You and I went to watch that in the theater together, and we were both like, Woo-hoo. So anyway, uh, my number three, let's bring this whole eclectic cast. I believe this came out in the mid 80s. I believe you have Brian Dennehy, I believe Kevin Costner, uh, Robert Klein. It's, you know, uh, and it's called Silverado. It's a good film. Uh, I still watch it. I've watched it the other day. I was over at a neighbor's house. And uh, I just sat there and we were talking and I said, hold on, hold on, hold on. This, is, this is a good movie. And so we both sat there and watched the whole damn film. Not to talk about amongst, you know, only during the commercial breaks, unfortunately. But uh, it's still worth, it still holds up. It's still fun. Uh, I wish I could remember. I think it might be one of the Carradine kids as well. Uh, Carradine, you know, guys, but you know, I think it's the old, it's not the, the one who asphyxiated himself in the closet, but it's the other one. Uh, but uh uh, but uh, I, I'm trying to trying to help the audience. It's dog food carrying. So it's the other carrying, I believe. But anyway, uh, watch it. Enjoy it. Uh, Silverado, my number three. <laughs> Did you disappear on that on that poor description? I apologize. Coming in at my number two. This actually might be the first. And oh, no, it's not the last. But it is the first time we actually have something in the top ten together. Uh, very disparaging list this week, which I find quite fun. 
But yeah. number, number two is Unforgiven. Uh, you talked about it before. I quite enjoy this one here. This has always been one that has stood out to me. Um, probably one of the earliest Westerns I ever saw, actually. Um, Bad and City Slickers. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, as far as when I actually saw them here. But um, yeah, this is just, you know, it's a good, like you said, revenge film. Get, get in that, that group along. Go after Gene Hackman. Hackman's a great villain. Eastwood's a great hero. What more do you want? Well written, well directed. Again, another Eastwood film. I guess ninety nine percent of Eastwood films are Eastwood films. But uh, yeah, I really like this one. Unforgiven coming in at my number dose. Let's hear what your number two is. When Gene Hackman, the the heavy in uh, Quick and the Dead as well. I think so. Which I actually like Sharon. That. I think that one's underrated too. Yeah, Sharon Stone, I believe. So uh, my number two. Uh, it was uh, Rio Bravo. Not Rio, uh, not not the other one. Everyone else gets. I think it's uh, Rio Lobo. I think I I don't know. There was one that's somewhat similar, uh, but I always get it confused. It's Eisenberg animated movie Rio. Yeah, yeah, not not Rio, but no Rio Bravo. This one has Dean Hackman as the drunken sheriff, uh, and uh, a young uh, Ricky Nelson as Dakota. Whereas the other one, if it's I think Rio Bravo and Rio something else. It's almost real similar to the, in the name, so it kind of always makes me up because uh, Dakota is also it's the, basically the exact same movie, but uh, uh, James Caan plays a guy by the name of Colorado instead of Dakota, and um, and somebody else, uh, Roger Robert Mitchum plays the other uh, the drunken sheriff in that one. So it's basically the same movie. They made it twice, but I enjoyed the performance more of Dean Martin. Uh, more uh, so, Rio Bravo is my second. Now, again, that's John Wayne as well. Uh, just a good, uh, you know, good. There's comedic moments, and there is some uh, just serial, uh, uh, serious uh, gunplay. And I enjoyed it. Uh, it's probably one of my favorites of all time. Uh, that's why it's number two. But my favorite one is not even really a real, a real western. It's a western, but like and you say, it's not like the heavy shoot 'em up, bang bang type. But go ahead. What's your, what's your number one, my good man? I can't wait to hear this. Well, I think you should know it if you think about it logically because you talked about it. You know I've had it on the list here before, so why would it not be on this list? Ladies and gentlemen, let's get on a train and take the 310 to Yuma. Choo-choo! Um, uh, I've never seen the original. Um, I have no intention, but I love this one here, man. This is just... It's gripping. It's it's well shot. It's Crow and Bill as two fantastic leads here. Lerman actually, he may I always forget about him, but he's great in this as well here. A uh, performance from a young Logan Lerman, uh, who I feel like still has an age. He's still very young. Um, <laughs> great eclectic cast. I mean, people popping in for even one or two scenes are delivering for, uh, top notch performances here. This is just a movie that I I always champion. I think it's like the, maybe the third or fourth time it has made a top ten list for me here. Um, yeah, 310 to Yuma. Another one where, you know, I went in with middling expectations just because I'm like, all right, it's a Western and, you know, whatnot. And I feel like it's actually at the time, while it had good reviews, I don't know if it was as champion as I feel like it's starting to become more champion in the last few years where it's making these lists more uh, now than ever. So my number 10 is 310 to Yuma. Dutch, tell me why your number one is something from 1910. Uh, it's <laughs> it's not 1910. I pulled it up because I wanted to give you 1963. It is another John Wayne film. You see, John Wayne shows up a lot, but this one's my best because the reason is is he's not like a uh, a runner around. He's a businessman who puts it, and it's just uh, of cattle. He's like uh, he runs the territory. Everyone respects him, and uh, there's just a lot of comedy. Uh, there's a scene where there's a the biggest uh, mudslide. Uh, everyone falls into the mudslide. It's just unbelievably funny. Uh, there's like you know, he goes, "I'm a gentleman, and I won't fight you." the hell I won't, and then he hits him in the face or something like that, and then there's another scene where he's trying to go over the rules because he's he's afraid that this guy is going to get his butt kicked. He goes, okay, man, there's none of this, and he, he holds his nose and he smacks it down, you know, and he goes, there's none of, no, no eye gouging either, and he, and he show, you know, he pokes the guy in the eyes. It's just a great comedy western romance uh, film, and I, I enjoyed this immensely. If you watch any John Wayne film. There's a lot of remasters from the John Wayne estate. This is one uh, that they they put out. Uh, I got. I think my dad has the uh, the one they put out in VHS because I bought it for him. 
not that he can play it anywhere probably, but it is one of my favorite all time westerns. I've not been able to find it on DVD in great condition. You can find it in black and white and like a blurry type feel sometimes. But McClintock is my number one, and it's just it just holds up, man. It's just it's just a great great film for me. Very interesting here. Uh, I will say I always like when we have um, almost very uh, different uh, top tens here, and they will <laughs> this week. Let's go over it one more time here for me, JPO, top 10 Westerns. Number 10, The Proposition. Number 9, Harango. 8, The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford. 7, Shanghai Noon. 6, Bone Tomahawk. 5, True Grit, the recent one. 4, City Slickers. 3, Django Unchained. 2, Unforgiven. And number 1 is 3, 10, Yuma. Dutchie, talk about yours. My number 10 is Wee Wee Wee. The good, the bad, the ugly, number nine, the searchers, number eight, the wild bunch, number seven, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, number six, get on board to the 310 to Yuma, number five, you, Unforgiven, number four, support your local sheriff, number three, Silverado, number two, Rio Bravo, that's the Dean Martin one, and don't forget, number one, McClintock. Ten dollars on eBay, man, go get it. Well, I got to make sure it's from the, the estate of John Wayne. I mean, I got to make sure it's the good version. That's the problem. There's a stamp. You got to look for a certain stamp. But, uh, but yeah, never mind. It's, it's a good show. It, uh, I'll find it one day. I'll find It's, it, you know, the one that I like the most. Uh, I think this is the one you want. It's $25. <laughs> I'll have to look at it. I, you, know, you can shoot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the word the one version I saw was colorized, so that was uh, authorized, you know, for colorization. I, you know, so if you want to watch a good colorized version, you can you can find it somewhere. But uh, my friend, my friend, it's that time where everyone likes to know what you're doing in your corner. I'm sorry, that's your intro. Shit, I just stepped on your intro. I'm sorry, pal. <gasps> oh, geez, don't look around. Don't turn around, man. Do not turn around, no matter what you do. There's a lot of people behind you that I don't. Oh, you did it. Yeah. You did it. <laughs> this is for one month only, a new little corner we have. It's the, it's the horror corner, Halloween corner with me, JPL, because Dutch don't watch no scary movies if he can avoid it. Uh, no, <laughs> I, 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 I do not. <laughs> I up for the uh, Shutter app, so I, I don't mind. Uh, although, actually, all of these are from uh, other uh, apps right now. I'll have some more Shutter stuff next week. Uh, these are all first times for me. I didn't do any repeats this week. These are all first time watches. Uh, over on Netflix, you have Hush. Uh, this one I actually enjoyed. This one uh, starts out, um, it's just, it's a serial killer um, going, kind of going door to door and he comes upon a woman who's deaf. Um, and he kind of at first enjoys that, but uh, she is quite smart and resilient. And, uh, you know, he comes into having some problems um, off and off her. So a uh, uh, very uh, isolated movie. There's only a handful of characters in it. A um, couple of dumb mistakes, as always, in, in horror movies. Are I was like, oh, why'd you do that? Uh, but for the most part, she's actually kind of smart. So that's good. Uh, how she recommended on Netflix. Uh, Wildling, also on Netflix from 2018. Um, Brad Dorif is very creepy. He holds Belle Powley um, hostage. She doesn't know it because he takes her at a young age. Um, doesn't let her out of her room. She, uh, one way or another, she gets out. And um, he starts to find out maybe he held in that room for a reason. Hmm. Uh, Got to watch it to find out a little bit more here, although I think the trailer gives it away. So if you don't want to give it away, don't watch the trailer. A little bit of a slow burn. Again, characters, I feel like this might have been better um, either longer or a miniseries because there's some character decisions that, again, I feel are just rushed here. Uh, Liv Tyler's uh, in this and she's good, but again, not enough is given to her. So a uh, light recommendation there. Uh, he Never Died, starring Henry Rollins from 2015, also on Netflix here. Um, again, smaller film with a bigger idea, and I like this because it's not exactly what you think it is, and it constantly evolves, and even the ending, you kind of go, oh, that's interesting here. So Rollins is very one note, which is arguably what the character is supposed to be, but I don't know, I kind of found, I found it, he could have had more fun with that character if someone else had played it, or if they had told him to Lighten it up a little bit more. I let like Rollins for most of his movie roles seems to be pretty straightforward. Now that I think about it, <laughs> he might. Yeah, he, play, he plays a bas basically the same kind of character every time. So he really does. I'm thinking about it now. Like the three or four things I've seen him in, I'm like, 
Oh no, that might just be him. So <laughs> at least I like the idea of this. You could tell obviously he only had so much budget here. So I didn't love it, but again, light recommendation. Uh Truth or Dare, not the one that I reviewed, I think, on this show, but you know, the smiley faces. This is a totally different movie with the same idea of a truth or dare game gone wrong. Um I <laughs> Oh, this is, I was mentioning to you before, I was going to mention what we do in the shadows. Uh, Guillermo is in this. Is in oh, Netflix. okay. <laughs> it's on Netflix. Uh, so, uh, I enjoyed the beginning of it here because uh, as it's kind of ramping up, you know, the game's getting more and more dangerous here, but towards the end, uh, it's got a lackluster ending, and it feels like it just kind of jumps short uh, to the end here, and so uh, the first half is better than the last half. It's okay. A very light recommendation if you're into horror movies over on Netflix. And then a the oldest movie, again, I'm going old school for you. 1996, The Craft. Uh, I never seen this before. Nev Campbell, throws a bulk. Where you been? Uh, <laughs> Robin Tuck. <laughs> Uh, they're all very good in this. Good performances here. I enjoyed. This is actually the opposite. I might have enjoyed the ending more than I enjoyed the beginning. The, it very much uh, a little bit slower and ramps up. Doesn't always come together. I feel like for all the characters here, I actually think the newer one has potential to be better because I think we'll find a little bit more about the personalities. This kind of jumped again. I feel like it jumped the shark a little bit on the personalities of all of a sudden they went from good to evil and there's no explanation and whatnot. And this could be better. I think as a mini series, actually, I feel. But um. Those that's the Halloween horror corner this week. Oh, I talked really fast. So you talk for a minute as I catch my breath. You know, I when I saw you do Truth or Dare, I was thinking you you, you watched the Madonna documentary in the horror section. That's I was like, why would he? Why I I can understand why he would say is horror, but at the same time, I'm just trying to figure out why is Jordan watching Truth or Dare? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. But then, I, then I remembered you don't like black and white films. <laughs> yeah, you know, that, I just thought it was <laughs> that was my thought process for some, like five seconds when I saw. It. I was like, "Why is that? The, why, why? What?" So anyway, man, I, I I gotta tell you, it's that time of the day. It's that time of the night where we watch or we learn. Actually, we're sitting at the learning tree. We're sitting at the learning tree tonight with the Jordan Owens because it's time for news and notable stuff. And I'm thinking does this Biddy Affleck have something to do in the news this week? I know background. <laughs> you just like reindeer. Ga- you just like reindeer games. <laughs> Not good. Yes, it is. Charlie uh, Steron, baby. I've got people go here. So um, let's talk some news and notables here. Uh, let's talk about the box office, if you will. Uh, the box what? office from October 9th to the 11th. There's still movies here. In fact, I was going to say, hey, man, Town Center and Paragon are open. Just throwing that out there. If you want No, I, I, I've seen, but there's nothing early I don't want to watch. I don't want to get, you know, the, what, the Grandpa movie? Well, I'm going to go see that tomorrow, maybe. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Loving Monsters with Dylan O'Brien. Oh, I was thinking about getting that the other day. So if I can watch it cheaper, yeah, I'll go watch it with you. Yeah, yeah. We'll go to uh, Paragon. All we'll right. go Monday. For the uh, well, we'll talk for the box office of this week. Uh, unhinged is <laughs> still hanging in at number five. It made six hundred and sixty thousand. That's right. It only takes six hundred and sixty thousand to make the top five <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> uh, bring that to nineteen million in its ninth week. Number four, New Mutants making six hundred and eighty-five thousand. I'll uh, bring that to twenty-one million in its seventh week. Three, Hocus Pocus is of all things is number three at the Bo, making an extra million. Bring that to three million in that second week. I didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, <laughs> number two, Tenet made an extra two million, bringing that to forty-eight million in its sixth week. And number one, you talked about it before. Good old Bobby De Niro's Roar with Grandpa, War with Grandpa, making three million in its debut week. Brother, I I, I just read, read something. I thought you're gonna have it in your notes probably, but I'll wait if you want me to. Take it away. Take it away. Jordan B. Uh, Michael B. Jordan. He's he signed on to help produce the movie Static Shock. I can I, picture. I, I, huh? I don't have that one up. I know. I, I I just thought you know that's nice that he's joining the production. So will he be Static Shock? No. Why not? Michael B. Jordan? Why not? No. I mean, at least to me, when I think Static Shock, I think kid. I don't think thirty-five year old dude. <laughs> you don't need a kid. I don't want a sixteen year old Static Shock. I'm tired of high school. Let's move on. Yeah, I said no. I'm tired of old dudes. Like we don't need that. Like no, give me Static Shock to the kid. That's what I want. 
fine be that way. Let's bring in Will Smith's kid. We'll just really screw the whole thing up. Uh, you're my hoodie drum. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have a new segment I want to add to the show here. We did it. We had fun last week. Let's see if we have any fun this week. The trailer for Monster Hunter. Have you seen this? Oh, I just watched it today. Well, you're watching it again, and I'm watching it for the first time. Yeah. Really this it was is supposed to be in theaters yeah. by now, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, I think it. Yeah, it was supposed to be out by now. And uh, Sony, of course, uh, their screen G. Uh, I'm surprised Anderson isn't part of this movie. Uh, her husband. Is he, the, is he the director? No, I'm saying I'm surprised he's just not attached. You yeah. know, usually that's how they work. Uh, but yeah, this is. That for the uh, Resident Evil. Yeah, Res- Resident Evil kind of looks like a. I think T.I. is writing dirty. <laughs> well, right now he is. Look at look at that big old sandstorm going behind him, right? Dirty, you know. But uh, I, I look at this and I'm I'm, I'm seeing, good, good. you know, it's like a little bit of Stargate, a little bit of the Mummy, <laughs> you know, already going on in this place in Jurassic Park. <laughs> it just looks like tremors. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> oh, and, and Tremors. Yeah, see, there you go. Or Dune. Either way you want to look at it. They, I think they're just mashing everything together and see if it works. A little bit of uh, the early King Kong. Yeah. Like the tarantulas or something, whatever that is. Stegosaurus tarantula or whatever. That is. <laughs> yeah. So, and a little bit of Gears of War going on there with the weapons. What's that? <laughs> you know, jeez. Oh, and a little bit of Lord of the Rings too. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that dragon. Fierce. All right. I mean, I, I don't love it. Don't hate it. <laughs> it's one of those movies that you say, well, it doesn't really deserve a theater outing <laughs> in this day and age, possibly. In, in a way, it almost seems like I would prefer to see it in the theater because it looks like that's going to be part of the enjoyment is that, oh, look, a giant monster on a big screen. Um, yes. Look, not as exciting as Fat Man. Well, it doesn't look as good as the Tremors film, by the way. <laughs> that's coming out pretty soon. Shriek Island. No. Did, you, did you see the? <laughs> it's coming out of VOD October 20th? That looks like, Ron, you know. Ron Perlman is scheduled for that movie. I didn't see him in that. Who's in that? Ron Perlman's in the movie, evidently. Oh, it is. It is her husband directing. You're wrong. Oh, oh, it is. Okay, see, I didn't see his name. That's why I just kind of went off on it. So it's his wife. <laughs> see, husband and wife team. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna do it, let's get all the paychecks for the family. Well, speaking of a return, Dexter. I have some pretty big news here for Dexter fans. Michael C. Hall and the showrunner are returning to Showtime with a ten episode limited season. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you're a fan of Dexter, it looks like he is coming back and uh, he's out of the woods. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. Uh, were you a Dexter fan at all? I, you know, I was off and on. I never watched it. According to some people who watched all of it, they didn't like how it ended. So this is kind of like a mulligan, you know, for him. So that, uh, hopefully they'll be able to fix it for him. That is definitely the. Um, I'm, I'm I'm like season two or three. <laughs> I, I slowly get around to it, but uh, that's definitely the arc I've seen from most, if not literally, ninety five percent of fans. Is, it was really good. Uh, some seasons better than others, and then ending. Oh Jesus! <laughs> so, uh, yeah, little like he says a mulligan. It's a given. Maybe a proper ending here. Um, he evidently he is very much alive. Uh, Shameless. I don't know if you're a Shameless fan. December sixth, season eleven, the final season will air. Uh, so yeah, we will get the the uh, whatever clan is coming back. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not shameless to say. I'm not a big fan, so you know, <laughs> I'm not shameless. I got friends that, that absolutely love the show. Uh, it's kind of an, a weird watch for me because William H Macy is kind of a piece of shit very early on, and yeah. he continues to be a piece of shit. So it's weird for me to watch in a way. But uh, 
season 11 obviously he's got a fan base uh <laughs> You, you know what? I, I, I know, uh, you know, you, you probably don't have this a note on here, but Leslie Jones, I just want to plug it because I love the show. Leslie Jones, October 18th, I believe, which is a few days from now, uh, from now, right? Or tomorrow, something yeah. like that. I don't know. It's, October 18th, I believe, is the day uh, you can set your DVRs. Supermarket Suite premieres. So there you go. I can't wait to watch that. I love that show. So, and she was a big fan. I can't wait to see it. I love her anyway. So, you know, we're 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 we're, we're simpaticos for humor. Is SNL new tonight? Who's hosting SNL tonight? I'm not sure who's who's hosting. Yeah, I'll let you know in two seconds after I do this. <laughs> the prequel is getting underway, which is upsetting because I'd rather just give me a sequel with Charlize. Like, I don't need a, I don't need a prequel in my opinion. It might be good, but the prequel is getting underway here. Anya Taylor Joy will be a set to uh, play Furiosa, and they've added two really cool actors here: Chris Hemsworth, as we all know, our Thor, and Yaya Abdul Mateen the second, who's a we would have been Candyman by now, and uh, who's also an Aquaman amongst others, uh, has been added to the cast as well. Recent Emmy winner for Watchmen, so that's a cool cast. Brings me a little bit more excited about it, but still, I just oh, I love Fury Road so much. Fury Road, I debated. Here, let me ask you this real quick. This is a fun little conversation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did debate putting on both Fury Road and The Revenant in my top ten westerns because uh, some people included them. Uh, what did you think? <laughs> the, the, okay, The Revenant, I I would let you get away with. Fury Road, no way it helped. Because <laughs> it's not a Western. Yes, it was in the Western Desert or something, but it was not. No, no, you can't have it. Sorry. I wouldn't let you had it. You know, I, you know, City Slickers is a slippery slope, but it had horses and it was a Western feel. So okay. I went with it. That, 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 that I would have fight you on. But, yeah, it's a comedy slash Western feel. So that's good. Uh, Issa Ray uh, from Lovebirds and her show. And um, Justin Bieber are your SNL guests this week, so uh, I'll be watching that probably once we wrap this it's up. Mo- it's mostly it's mostly for uh, for uh, Justin Bieber, right? Oh, for me watching, yeah. Totally. <laughs> that yummy yum, that yummy yum. I knew uh, Greenland. I know you're looking for forward to. I was about to say Harvey and Bardem. Uh, <laughs> uh. uh, pulled to you. Greenland with Gerald Butler is going to PVOD, which is the new uh, premium VOD. December 18th, you can catch it for $20. I'm in! Oh, God. Just wait about a month because supposedly it's going to go to HBO in early 2021. So I'm in! Hold your horses. I think you can wait for Greenland. Um, I don't know if you saw the first look of the Marvel um, comedy cartoon starring Patton Oswalt, Modoc. Uh, they gave a, a, a couple scenes away here recently. Looks funny. Um, I like these kind of new ideas of, you know, you saw both the live action version of, um, what was it, with Ron Funches on um, Tudic, and then that was the Star Trek Lower Decks. So I like this. I like that we're getting a Marvel show um, with, with a bit of a, uh, an even an M-rated humor, kind of like Harley Quinn. I don't know if it's going to go as far, but it does seem to go definitely PG-13, if not R-rated territory here. Um Another cartoon that you enjoyed, I believe you said you enjoyed it, uh, Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous is coming back season two. They, they aired that teaser trailer recently. Um, speaking of twos, Stephen Lang has said that they were able to wrap up all his scenes for Don't Breathe 2. So I, you liked that movie with me, didn't you? I, I watched it with you. I thought it was okay. Um, you know, we, there's a lot of there, a lot of plots, uh, plot, plot issues with us uh you know in it but you know it was a, it was a decent good decent movie it was from the kid who's 13 reasons to live or something or die or 13 something you know, what, what that the girl no no was it no oh bad i'm see, i i misplaced everybody in that. <laughs> no it was a girl from um evil dead remake oh it's from zoe's extraordinary playlist or whatever it's that girl oh oh okay i okay, 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 gotcha but uh, so yeah, Don't Breathe Two is coming out. I don't th- I don't think she's reprising her role. This takes place several years after, where he's kind of trying to l- live a life alone, and uh, you know how you know it goes uh, with movies like that. And uh, what's the one with Denzel, the Equalizer? You can never get left alone. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> another sad news for a TV show, kind of like Glow, that was renewed, and now because of everything that's happening, never mind. We don't got time for you. On becoming a god, Central Florida, with Kirsten Dunst. 
Uh, the Showtime has given it a season two, but they have currently uh, retaken that back. So we will not be season two of the first Dunn show. I It's one I it was it set on my DVR and I never got to it. So uh, now I probably never will. Uh, <laughs> See, that's the problem with things. You know, you, you really want to watch them and then you hear there's nothing to get to happen. Yeah. I don't yeah. want to, I, I just, it's sad because like I'm, I would imagine there's a good chance that, you know, it leads off wanting season two. Maybe it doesn't, but. Um, my last piece of news, and then if you have anything, get it ready once I do this. Um, Spider-Man 3, lots of rumors, speculation. Uh, are we getting Toby? Are we getting Garfield? Uh, does look like we will be getting at least a little bit of Doctor Strange. Benedict Cumberbatch has been added to the third Spider-Man. Well, the second third Spider-Man uh, <laughs> now with Tom Holland here. So uh, I look forward to that. Uh, you know, if we're going multiverse, which would explain why maybe Cumberbatch is popping up and how we're going to get some McGuire in there. Um, uh, what's your opinion on that? Do you want to see more of a contained story? Do, are you cool with it being this new multiverse thing with McGuire and Garfield and Cumberbatch? And I would, I would rather just keep it streamlined right now because I want to, I want to get the tale that we're going to get now. You know, I, I, you know, shockwave, I think we, you know, elect, uh, electro, I mean, we should bring him in right away. I think we need to bring in Craven. Uh, you know, I've heard some good ideas for Craven, like uh, Jason Momoa would, would be, a uh, would be a great Craven. Uh, you know, I, he has the look, he has everything about him. I think that would spot be, <laughs> well, sometimes you gotta be spot on, you know, who, who are you going to have Willem Dafoe? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying. But, yeah, uh, that one, you know, I, I, I would just rather have a very linear u- universe for right now. We don't need to open a Pandora's box. Save that for the cartoon. I don't agree with that. I just feel like let's at least get, like, a full normal trilogy before we start, you know, combining yeah. it with stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. Before before you leave the MCU, you can jump over to, you know, whatever Sony's going to do, they're going to wreck it probably if, they, if they're off to their own devices. So that's what we got to – Ralph. What? You know, also wrecks it, Ralph. Oh, there he is. Yes, yes. You threw a Pixar reference in there somewhere. Hey, uh, the only two news is uh, news stories I have is Star Trek Discovery. Uh, if you haven't watched it, season premiere uh, th- three just started. But Disney, ha- uh, not Disney, CBS All Access has renewed it for a fourth season already. So look for that to come down the pike. And uh, if you have an AMC theater in your area. Uh, there's offers to start at $99 to rent out the theater uh, to watch a movie, uh, one of their stocks, or you bring in your own, uh, you know, so it's one of their stock films that you can watch uh, that they have licenses for. So you can, you can watch uh, Empire Strikes Max to your heart content if you have 20 people to watch a movie with. So that's basically uh, what, what you can put in their theater at the moment. So there you go. AMC, if, you're, if they're nearby, well, go ahead and do it. That's your high roller. If we had an AMC or if someone else did that for ninety nine dollars, would you do it? Come on, man, do it. Um, I, I'll be honest. Uh, I I got the offer today. Uh, from my for my cousin who lives in Tampa, and he and he threw that out there. Uh, to do it because the AMC is down the street from me. He goes, "Would you want to do it? You want to split it?" <laughs> and I said, "Might we might do it." So uh, it all depends on what 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 offerings they have on the table. Uh, if we want to watch something that retro, uh, or you know, we can't watch current unfortunately because that'll cost us more of an arm and a leg. So, but it did start at a hundred dollars. So, uh, you, you said uh, other than that, buddy, I, I'm done. My, my news is all good. I caught up. I, I learned a lot from you. Uh, you know, we learned that Tremors is coming out on VOD this week. Coming up, uh, the, you know, the the fifth installment, I think, or fourth or fifth or something like that. Uh, with uh, what's his name? At least five, if not six or seven. <laughs> what's his name from? Uh, uh, the Pedro movie, uh, vote for Pedro. I, yeah, yeah, that one. So he's he's coming in. Uh, he's in that one. So yeah, watch it. Uh, I guess I'm gonna watch. It. I'm gonna try. I'll probably rent it. I'll probably rent it. So if I get it, I'll call you. We come over. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be an awful film. I know it is. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, other than that, man, I'm just happy uh, that uh, we got the show done tonight. And uh, my sinuses are killing me right now, so I'm happy that we're wrapping it up. So, uh, anything else we got for us besides uh, Hulk Hogan as Rip in the back and uh, Stallone is uh, a, a man in uh, the prison uh, in lockup? And I'm looking at it's uh, Wild Wild. It's not from lockup. It, it ain't over the top. I don't know. I like lockup though. 
It looks like he's in his prison jumpsuit. That's why I was looking at him. You know, Patrick Swayze, it looks like for Roadhouse. You know, and uh, Uma Thurman is Poison Ivy. I don't know who that one on the, on the pole is behind you. But, uh, oh, yeah, it's uh, Elizabeth Berkeley from Showgirls. So there you go. Are you sure that's not from Lockup? Or, oh, maybe it could be from Cobra? No? Uh, he looks too young for Lockup. I could be wrong. I just, I like, because all these movies have a common is that they're bad. Um. <laughs> oh, so it could be. Let, let go, go, move over just a little bit for me. Out here. Over to you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's White Girls. Okay. Dolph Lundgren is He-Man. Yeah, it looks like Lockup for some reason. Uh, it's probably not, though. I like Lockup. Yeah, it could be it could be lock up, it could be uh over the top. But he'd be wearing a tank top. I don't know. You're gonna have to investigate that for us. <laughs> yeah, that's a random thing. Yeah. So anyway, boss, I, I, I maybe it is lock up. It's got a twenty three percent of rotten tomatoes. Maybe it is considered bad. I liked it, whatever. I didn't yeah, I, I didn't I didn't see anything wrong with it either. <laughs> it had a really creepy beginning, but then again I was also five. <laughs> when I watch it's it. like the it's like the same movie was almost like the same movie with uh, Tom Selleck and Innocent Man, you know. I don't so. know. I've never heard of that. Okay, well, <laughs> there you go. Got two two prison <laughs> films to watch. <laughs> Just like half of your westerns list, I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boss. Well, anyway, you want to give us? One you want to tell everybody? One day you should throw in a fake movie in your top ten and see if I catch on. You know, oh, well, yeah, the one called Mr. Wubbly's Play Palace with Ernest Borgnine. I just be like, yeah, that sounds interesting. Dutch never got around to that. Anywho, <laughs> it's about a man who discovers a penis pump. <laughs> Wait a minute, 1932, <laughs> and it grants him three wishes. <laughs> a one. Anywho, yeah. what better way to end the show than with a penis pump reference for Dutch McAllister? I am JBO. Go see a movie, I guess, in your own house or buy a rental from AMC for $99. Or Thanks. find a local. <laughs> Good luck and love and kisses. <laughs>